What's up everyone? We're back from Great Dane Care. Today we're here to talk to you about leash training. Now to me, in my opinion, leash training is an incredibly important topic. As we all know, Great Danes are a giant breed, literally and physically, and one that is not great at walking the leash it could quite potentially cause harm to themselves as well as others. Um, now as far as starting out for picking a leash, I actually don't recommend the retractable kind. I find it doesn't have quite enough control and the dog also has a hard time sensing, you know, what's an appropriate distance to be away from you. And while they are cheap, they are certainly effective. Just the standard six foot um, nylon leash is actually what we use 90% of the time for Gus. The only circumstance where we don't use this particular leash is when we were first training her to teach recall. We had a 40 foot version of the same exact nylon leash. So with that, let's jump in. We'll show you some tips and tricks on how to best train your Great Dane on how to properly walk on a leash. So let's jump into it. Proper leash etiquette entails that you and your dog have a close relationship. The Great Dane should not be ahead of you, behind you, and certainly not pulling you along. Their shoulders should be just in line with your hips, and they should be focused on you rather than the surroundings. In addition to placing the loop at the end of the leash over my wrist, notice how I have also choked down the leash to gather up any remaining slack. This limits the amount of play in the leash and helps keep your Great Dane in the proper position at all times. Another trick I've learned is to loop the leash over your index finger rather than trying to grip or wrap around your hand. This provides more control as well as a quick way to release the leash if needed. My favorite method for leash training a Great Dane is called the sprint walk method. Once again, while providing little slack in the leash, I randomly alternate my pace between a slow walk and run. The rapid changes in pace force the dog to closely monitor my movements in order to stay in position with me. Once they get used to following your every movement, you can also incorporate turns to further challenge them. This could be a turn to the left, right, or even an about face to keep them on their toes. In addition to leash training, the sprint walk method is also a great form of exercise. I also like to play follow the leader for leash training. This time using a long line leash that's around 40 feet in length, I walk with my Great Dane holding only the handle at the end of the leash. Instead of walking in a predictable path, I'll take random turns or even abruptly turn around. Hopefully, thanks to your previous training with the sprint walk method, the dog will naturally follow you through these turns. If they choose not to follow, you'll eventually get far enough apart to reach the end of the long line leash and they'll be forced to catch back up to you. Like the sprint walk method, this teaches them to pay close attention to you. While not a requirement for leash training, another tip that I really like is to have my Great Dane sit anytime we come to a stop. This could be when crossing a road, checking the mail, or even greeting someone. By teaching your dog to sit during a stop, you place them in a position of more control. This means that they'll be less likely to get distracted or pulled towards something that might be passing by. All right, so we hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like more information about leash training for your Great Dane, you can visit our website at greatdanecarry.com forward slash leash, and it'll have a step-by-step -step explanation on how to teach a lot of these different things, as well as links to some of our favorite leashes, in particular that long line leash that's fantastic for recall training. If you like the video, please, uh, please make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and have a great day everyone. Bye.